Okay, let's make sense of this. Let's get to the phone line, speak with energy expert Kojo Poku on the impact of this latest development uh, on tour. Uh, thanks for your time tonight, sir. Does it come to you as a surprise that Isaac Jose has resigned at this time? Well, yes. Um, I'm trying to do my check, and I don't know whether he has resigned um, from the audio. It tells us that he is going, but I don't think he has left to speak. Um, because it's near the festive season, all the people I'm calling are also not privy to the news. Nobody has cited a letter of resignation. Um, but since it's his voice and he's saying he's going, it does come as a surprise to me because he was doing such a good work at the refinery. Okay, uh, but what's your reading of all of this? We, we know Isaac was said to have taken a very tough stance on issues in the past, even had a spa with the former energy minister. Uh, do, do you think that uh, this is a normal transition, maybe? Well, I can't tell. You know, when people resign, you would expect that a reason is given to the resignation. Um, I have had a one-on-one -on -one with him currently when they announced that they have signed the 11 million um, with the group like the Vitol and his partners. And for me, I thought it was good news. He expressed um, vibrant and willfully that he's going to lead Tema Refinery into greater heights. Um, like I said, for me, it's a surprise because if he had any such um, plan maybe he would have told some of us but he did not and we don't know i don't think i mean there is anything on towards about his resignation we have to wait and see the reason behind if we ever get to find out all right but uh, this like he said in the speech um as political appointees they are in transit they come and go so i don't think we should read too much into it and, and while we await that official confirmation, what would you say about his accomplishments at all? What would be his legacy? Well, I think he's done well. For the short two and a half years that he's been there, I think he's done well. He made sure that the um, maintenance, you know, the key for a refinery is maintenance. And they didn't have a good maintenance culture coming in from the Wadapu era. Um, they didn't have audited accounts coming in from the Wadapo era. And I think he has done well to make sure that the audited accounts are at least up to speed and then the maintenance are done. I mean, there has been two or three parcels that has been refined during his tenure and all of them recorded um, very good um, margins in terms of the losses in the system has been reduced as compared to the past. So, like I said, I'm very surprised and I think... Um, we will look forward to find out and maybe as the days unfold, we'll get to know a bit more why he has resigned. Mm. My, my producer tells me that he said in the audio we just listened to that before he assumed office, he said he would refine two parcels of crude and now he's done four. So a sense that he's accomplished pretty much what he wanted to. Well, I, I honestly don't know what that means. The refinery is there to refine as many parcels as possible. Um, Tema oil refinery um, can do up to a million barrels a month. So he had challenges when he came in. One, um, nobody had confidence in going to port to refine. Tor had a bad name with the bankers. Tor had a bad name with the traders. Nobody was confident that if you take your product to Tor, you will not get a lot of losses and you would get very good yield. So nobody wanted to go to Tor. Within the two years, that confidence has been built and now Companies are um, very confident to take products there, as we all heard in the news about two weeks ago, the 11 million um, barrels of crude that is coming in to make sure on tolling, they can now toll those barrels. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody will go into tour and think you will only refine two barrels. Two <laughs> barrels, uh, sorry, two parcels, a million barrel right. parcel, you can do it within two months. So that is not, I think, I don't know whether that was a joke, but for me, I don't think that would be something that anybody going there will stick to. You want to basically be able to do a parcel every month. Right. Because that's the only way Tor can survive. I, I, I'm told we've run out of time on this one, but just a quick one um, about the future of Tor as we head into 2020. Whoever takes over, what are the issues they should be uh, taking a look at? 
Well, the party should build on the legacy of Isaac. I think, Isaac, like I said, Isaac has done well, and um, just to make sure that the place is maintained, the maintenance is done, and physical policies are put in place to make sure the, pl the place is in, in profit profitability. All right. Thank you very much for your perspective and insight to uh, this latest development with the Tema Oil Refinery, Kojopoku, and energy experts there.